Today is Monday the 28th of March. Um, it's evening time, what is it? It's 20 past 10 in the evening local time. This video is going to be quite disjointed, I think, and probably take a lot of editing, but I just want to tell you what's happened today um, as best I can remember it. The day started well, we got up and had a good breakfast and drove, I think it was about an hour and a half we had left to get to Chemichel, where I had previously picked refugees up from and we got to the place and it certainly looked far less busy and it clearly was much better and more organised than it had been when I'd been there before. There'd been a story in the media about people picking up arranging for people to do picking up of refugees in the same way that I've been doing um, and then using that in order to sex traffic young women um, to wherever I don't know I didn't even read the whole story I saw it and read a bit of it but there'd been this story consequently as of today the place that I've been picking up refugees in Chemichel were requiring that any drivers couldn't be private individuals, they had to be authorised by an organisation. Um, long story short, we managed to get all authorised by an organisation, a UK organisation, which I'll probably go into more detail about at some point. Um, and so we got Jane um, authorised as a driver, but it then proved difficult to get a number of people that we could transport really anywhere from the Tesco or the former Tesco at Chamichel. Um, I spoke to the people dealing with those that want to come to the United Kingdom and they said they've got about 60 applications in for visas to get people into the United Kingdom but they weren't expecting confirmation on any of them for at least two weeks. They were more than delighted to take my contact details so that if and when they have got people that can be transported they can get in touch with me and depending where I am we can hopefully schedule that I can bring some people back to the UK but that's down the line um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see when some visas start coming through and whether the people who the visas have come through for need transport to the UK so that was that, but the other thing that we were told about was that um, I think it was about 25 kilometres away from where we were, there was another place where there were lots of refugees and it was much nearer the border, um, but we had a better chance of finding people who needed to be transported. And so in the end, we bit the bullet and we made the journey. We ended up very, very close to the border. Um, I'm tempted to say spitting distance, but certainly on a map, we were very close to the border line um, on the map. And so we went to this other place, which was, or at least had in the past been, I think, a big shopping centre was now closed and when we arrived had a fair number of refugees in it but didn't look anything like full. So we, what did we do? We spent a while finding out where and how we register as drivers for them. Um, Um, but when we eventually did find out what we needed to do, we were told to go to 
the people dealing with coordinating refugees with drivers. And we went looking for where that was. Me and Jane actually disagreed about the directions we'd been given and so we tried going one way um, and then we sort of came back another way through another part of the building and a chap appeared from outside and we were asking him if we knew where the coordination desk was. And he said, um, where are you going to? And I said, well, well, we'll go wherever is needed. So he said, no, no, wait. He said, I'm not, I'm, I'm asking the wrong question. Um, where have you come from? So I said, we've come from the United Kingdom. So he said, so you want to take people to the United Kingdom? So I said, I'd love to, but the United Kingdom won't let them in. And so therefore, we are happy to take people wherever they need to go. And I told him that I'd done previous trips to Italy, to um, Latvia and to Portugal. And when I said Portugal, he seemed astonished. And he said, Portugal, you will drive to Portugal? And I said, yes. And he said, hold on a minute, I have to sit down. And he found a chair genuinely he had to sit down he said I have had the job of coordinating on connected with governments Portugal Poland um, and the Ukraine getting people from here to Portugal he said and I have sent over 500 people to Portugal but I have two people who have a big dog, a very big dog, and nothing that I've been able to arrange would take the dog, and they don't want to go if they can't have the dog. He said, would you take the dog? So I said, well, yes, we'll take the dog, but if it's only two people, then we're going to want more people going maybe to other places along the way to Portugal. Um, we then continued to walk through what used to be the shopping centre and he was calling out to various people to tell them the good news that he'd found someone who would take the big dog to Portugal. Um, and so it was a bit late in the day and we looked around for other people to take to other places. Um, I'm going to make this a bit long story short, but essentially the plan is that we leave in the morning and we go to Berlin with two people. We then carry on and go to with one person, a young lady who is a student and is studying physics um, and then we go down to Portugal with two more people and the big dog. It looks at least likely that we're going to try and add to that number because we've got more seats than that but we're going to try and add to that number in the morning. Where the destinations will be we don't know yet um, and hopefully along with this video I've managed to get some photographs sent so that the people editing the video can include the photographs. But we've got a picture of the dog, the big dog, lying down on a bed um, and the mother and daughter um, who own the dog in the picture. Um, we've got a picture of me Jane, um, the chap we met, whose name escapes me, I'm afraid. I'm not going to find that. Um, 
who was the one that was astonished that we would go to Portugal. And another chap who's been a great help as well in sort of organising the people involved and, and what needs to be done. Um, his name is David. His name is David, the chap who, the chap who was astonished that um, we would go to, t to Portugal. We also, um, and again, there's likely to be pictures of this, that perhaps whoever's editing the video can in, in, interpose. We went down the road to a hotel to stay in um, for tonight before going back tomorrow to take these people. And um, we found a hotel and in the car park, there were a number of ambulances and they were all ambulances with UK number plates on and they were all right hand drive. And this evening we had something to eat and then we went outside to the car park to get some stuff out the van and there were a load of guys around the ambulances I asked if they were English and none of them were English they thought I was asking if they spoke English and they, I said are you English and they said a little <laughs> um, and they said that they're taking the ambulances across the border I think tomorrow but I'm not entirely sure and I said you you guys are taking these ambulances across the border and he said yes and I shook his hand and said you're a good man and then I said we were transporting people to where they needed to go and he said something to the other men that were there a number of them um, clearly saying to them these people are transporting people where they need to go and he then shook my hand and he said you're a good man it's been quite a day and i'm going to get some sleep thanks very much for watching these videos we managed to do this because people on the internet like you have sent money for us to be able to do this so please spread the word like share and subscribe and in the section below i think there's ways that you can contribute money to help to pay for getting these people to where they need to go there are hotel stays and things involved to get to portugal it's probably about four hotel stays all the meals and everything else that needs to be paid for these people are in the places that they can get taken care of um, from conversations today it appears they kind of come in waves the people across the border and it's in a bit of a lull at the moment um, but at any time apparently within an hour or so there can be thousands more at each of the places that um, handle these refugees and coordinate getting them taken to wherever they're going. Um, once again from myself and from Jane, thanks very much for watching. Please continue to support us and uh, I'll update you as soon as I can.